Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And I'm so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode where we are talking about this whole concept of being stuck and no longer being on the right path (laughs) and what that means to you and why you might already be on the right path. Now, I know it might sound a little weird to you, How could you already be on the right path if you are stuck and confused? I know it might even sound a little crazy, but as your midlife coach, I think you'll be surprised and encouraged by the podcast today. We're going to get there and talk about all of it. But first, this episode is sponsored by a new kid in town. It's my fun and practical new little book called 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50. Get unstuck, avoid regrets, and live your best life. We all need this, too, as an antidote to all of the negative thoughts about aging. So if you're thinking, there's got to be more out there for me, or wondering, why can't I figure out what I want and just get unstuck already? Or if you're asking yourself, how can I have more fun when turning 50 or being over 50 is such a bummer? Then this little book will help you. 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50 will help you change the way you think about midlife. Each chapter is filled with upbeat, encouraging midlife goodness. No matter what's going on in your life, you can usually find a way to turn up your creative volume and celebrate a little bit more. Inside the book, you'll learn six different areas of your life that are important to celebrate, why midlife is the perfect time to invite more celebration into your life, and 50 powerful and easy ways to celebrate your life after 50. There's also 30 journal prompts uh, for you to think more and reflect more and push yourself to understand your mindset about this time in your life. Celebrating more like this helps you embrace what's truly possible at any age. 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50 is available now at your favorite online bookstores, or you can head over to www.50waystocelebrate.com. Okay, let's dive into this whole concept of no longer being on the right path and what it means to you and why it might not be true. When you're stuck, it is such a drag. It can kind of feel like mud. That's the way I often describe it. What it's like when you can't see when you're in mucky, muddy water. Now, I don't know how often you're in mucky, muddy water, but but things aren't clear. They feel heavy and murky. Like even if you're trying to walk in the mud, right? It feels heavy. Your feet are getting stuck. It's murky. You can't see. Every time you put your foot down, another pile of mud comes up and just messes things up even more. You want to get out, but it's slow. You can't see where you're going. Do you recognize any of this? Like I said, it's a big drag. Being stuck can feel so confusing and overwhelming, and that's just the image I get. (laughs) Maybe you have a different image, but that's what I think about. Now, the reason you would feel like this is because of what you're thinking. What might that be? What are you thinking to feel confused about what you want? What are you thinking to feel overwhelmed about what to do? What are you thinking to feel like you're going down the wrong path, right? So you're thinking something that creates feelings, that you're making a mistake or that you're overwhelmed or that you're confused. Can you see it? My clients tell me what they're thinking. Sometimes it comes easy, sometimes not so much. It's the same when I do my own thought work. Sometimes you have to sit with it for a little until you see the pattern or you sense the familiarity of the well-worn thought. It's usually thoughts like this. I don't know what I want. I don't have a passion. I wish I knew what I wanted. I wish I knew where I was going. I'm so stagnant. I'm just not fulfilled. I'm so bored. I want more. I'm totally not reaching my potential. I don't want to have regrets. Those kinds of thoughts. And what I notice when I hear this kind of thinking is that it's more than just feeling stuck. For sure, these thoughts usually lead to feelings like stuck, confused, overwhelmed, just like 
like a like a a hole. <laughs> You're in a hole, <laughs> which is a thought. But there's that feeling of just being uh, stagnant, right? And then there's one more feeling that comes up, and it's coming from a slightly different thought in addition to these. And it starts with a question, a question that spins around up there completely unsupervised, kind of like that old piece of playground equipment when we were kids. Do you know what I'm talking about? That merry-go-round looking thing made of a round piece of steel that had places to hold on to. Kids would go on that thing and then some kid or a couple of kids would make it go fast by holding on and using their feet kind of like running around and then they would hop on while kids on it would totally lose their balance and fly off. (laughs) So much fun. Oh my gosh, they don't have those anymore. Now, the reason I thought of this piece of playground equipment is because it felt like an uncontrolled spin, doesn't it? Here's the question that's often up there like a kid on that merry go round flying around. What if I can't figure it out? What if I can't figure out how to get off? (laughs) And when you're stuck, what if I can't figure out how to move forward? What if I can't figure out how to get out of this spin? The thing is that when you ask yourself a question, you end up answering the question too. The way you answer the question to yourself is actually your thought that creates how you feel. That's how it works. So how do you think you might answer the question, well, what if I can't figure it out? Probably something like, I can't figure it out. That's probably what you're thinking, which ends up morphing into even more of a spin about what's not possible. Time running out and basically being on the wrong path forward. And as they say on Curb Your Enthusiasm, it's just a big bowl of wrong, my friend. It is so unpleasant. That is, it sucks. So here's a different kind of question for you. What if you're stuck, but you're also on the right path? What? (laughs) Can you be both stuck and on the right path? You know what? I really think you can. And here's why I think this is a great way to think when you're feeling stuck and confused about your future. First, it's an optional thought that helps you move forward. Why? Because the feeling state you produce for yourself when you think this thought is way more useful than when you indulge in the icky spin. Notice how that thought makes you feel perhaps more patient or confident, maybe calm, maybe more self-assured. It kind of makes you think, what would you be able to do or accomplish if you were fueled with these kinds of emotions instead? There doesn't seem to be a downside to thinking this way. You think something that actually helps you reach your goals. So the first reason is because it's a more useful way to think. And the second reason to think that you just might be able to be stuck and on the right path is because I see evidence for it. I see it time and time again. I have evidence that it is common. And as a listener of the podcast, you hear it time and time again too from my guests. What I mean is that once women in the middle get to the other side of their goal and are excited about their lives again, they see that they were often on the right path. Like, in fact, they were always on the right path. (laughs) And what I mean is that this all becomes clear. Their experience and skills actually help them achieve their new goals. What they had started to look at with some disdain and detachment from in terms of, you know, the circumstance that they had created for themselves, it turns out that it was actually the exact thing or things that helped them move forward in the end. What I think is happening here is that when you get stuck, you start to feel behind or overwhelmed or, you know, kind of that that the task at hand to become happier or fulfilled and clear again about your future, that those tasks just too big, too hard, and that you have nothing to bring to the table to help yourself. There's a disconnect from what you've done that you're so frustrated with to what you want that seem so amorphous and unclear. They don't seem related. So you don't appreciate what you have, what you've built, what you know. And when you're annoyed with all of that, it's hard to see the benefits. (laughs) I've seen that with my own path too. When I was in my funky phase between 45 and 50, 
I was in a long-term job and bored to tears. I'd been in my job way too long. I wasn't learning anything new. I felt stagnant. And I was down on myself and how I ended up in this situation. I felt pretty disconnected to my solid skill set and decades of experience. My story about myself was that there was something wrong, not something right. And when you're stuck, it's so easy to feel a bunch of other negative emotions too. Like I said, I was frustrated with my job, my situation, and myself. I wasn't acting or thinking from a place of gratitude for my skills, my energy about a job search, clarity about what I wanted, or courage for making a change. That is for sure. But when I got on the other side of it, it was crystal clear. What I mean is, after I got laid off, I gave myself six months to think about what I wanted, started coach training, started my new business. After all of the dust settled, it couldn't have been more obvious. I was totally on the path and have been my whole life. I started to see the clues and patterns, the way I always loved asking questions, the way I excelled in qualitative research and that kind of work, the way I was fascinated by human behavior, the way I loved the long form interview, the way I loved looking at exact patterns of speech, and the way I loved to hunt for clues about greater meaning. The way I'd always been an entrepreneur here and there since I was 13 years old, first with calligraphy, and then with Fimo jewelry, remember Fimo? <laughs> and then with an actual product. Also, the way I loved entrepreneurial aspects of my jobs, either with social media or with community campaigns or with the development of books. And also the way I've always had a little Etsy store, well, not always, but for the past 13 years or so, for my beaded wire pendants and kippas. All of it. Some of my friends say that I've been a coach for decades, even though I didn't have the training. And now that I look at all of my skills, interests, education, natural affinities, hobbies, and entrepreneurial efforts, it is so obvious. I've always been on the path. I was stuck, I was confused, and I was always on the right path. Think about some of the guests you've met on my podcast with the same message. You met Eileen McKenna. Her podcast was 179, Finding My Passion to Teach Creativity in Midlife. She was always on the right path, but she felt completely disconnected. How about episode 175, How Designing Jewelry Got My Career Unstuck in Midlife with Nancy Marland. Same thing, when she tells her story, you'll see that there were hints and clues about what she was always attracted to, and that helped her make her transition. What about episode 173, Reimagine Your Career to Get Unstuck in Midlife with Dr. Laura Blaisdell? Same thing. She completely switched part of, like, part of the way she showed up as a physician and what she did professionally, but she's still a doctor and she's still doing other amazing things, but she didn't even see it as a possibility because she was so busy with her clinical practice. So interesting. And then we have episode 154, Midlife Makeup and More with Elise Markham-Johns. She was doing something completely different, but she saw the clues to how much she loved makeup and all of that sort of um, everything to do with it. She was just so fascinated with it, even in her television business uh, when she was involved with television. So it's so interesting. And then there's one more I want to highlight, although there's many more on the podcast. Episode 138, Following Your Passion to Create, Recycle, and Educate with Joanne Jones. She was in finance, but it all came back to her roots and her passion when it came to sewing. And she launched a fabulous business and is able to make an amazing contribution to things she cares so deeply about. So interesting. And this is just to name a few. These women were always on the right path, but when they felt stuck, they didn't see it at all. They felt so disconnected. So, so I hope you found these ideas encouraging. Just because you're stuck and working on getting unstuck doesn't mean that you're not also on the right path for you in your next chapter to move forward, to find fulfillment, to have more clarity, to create more excitement. It really all starts with your thinking. Same old story with the importance of your mindset, but not the same old story with the way you're thinking about feeling stuck and confused. Oddly enough, it could still be a good thing. Adding the little three-letter word and 
could really play a huge role in creating a different emotional reality for you as you navigate these interesting and uncertain waters. So try this new thought on for size. I might just be on the right path already. I'm curious about the experience of being on my path. I could be surprised about what I'm learning about the path that I'm on. I'm open to the possibility that I'm on the right path, even though I don't quite understand it all yet. Your new mindset could be the missing part of the puzzle to appreciate the new chapter that you are about to create. Okay, that's it for this episode. As you know, my focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time spinning and feeling stuck about aging, about empty nest, about relationships, about your career, about being more compassionate towards yourself, about all of it. It's time to get excited about your life again. Remember, being the queen of your brain domain is the best way to be, and I am here to help. This is what you'll learn when you hire me as your coach, and you know what? You're not going to believe what's possible in your life and the transformation that you will be ready to make. When it comes to applying these concepts, however, that's when you really benefit from coaching, and that's when you grow faster. That's why you should join my monthly midlife coaching program, The Finally First Club. Finally First is my monthly program where I teach lessons, help you apply the concepts in your life, and am available to mentor and coach you along the way. It is a fun and comfortable way to get clarity and focus for your next chapter. I'm also there to answer your questions and just like the whales that I adore, take a deep dive into your thought work so that you can finally get unstuck and move forward even now at your age. It's upbeat, it's totally fun, and it's a great way to get unstuck. So get on the VIP waitlist now because enrollment is opening again soon. Just head over to www.iamfinallyfirst.com. For show notes and links, head over to www.coachwithsusie.com. And to buy my new book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, head over to www.50waystocelebrate.com. Let's do this, ladies. It's time for you to put yourself first, one thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next week. 